I'm Crystal Renee, and I'm a serial entrepreneur, speaker, author, business coach, and brand strategist, and I'm the founder of Simply She. Simply slay hard every day. We teach entrepreneurs how to monetize their expertise and create multiple streams of income. I help entrepreneurs get what they really want out of life. We take the complexity and the overwhelm out of building a profitable and sustainable business. So what makes me great? That takes me back to a time in high school when I was at Ellen Roosevelt High School uh, in Greenbelt, Maryland, and I was in the 10th grade, and um, I was on the step team. And I was standing with, let's just call her Susie, and if anyone's played a professional sport or been a part of a team, you know that on that bulletin board after school, there's the list of who made the team. And I was standing next to Susie, and she had been cut from the performance team for the third time that year. And our team was number one in the state. And so although you were on the team, you still had to try out in order to perform. And Susie was defeated, um, but I just knew that in spite of all of this, that I could help her. And I didn't know then, but I know now, that that was a superpower. It was my superpower. I didn't know that teaching other people how to break down complex processes and make it simple for them so that they could get what they want out of life was a superpower. And so I worked with Susie a couple of times. And after that, she made the competition team not once, not twice, but six times for the remainder of that season. And so from there, looking back, I know that what I do today coincides with what I did back then in terms of helping women entrepreneurs to create multiple income streams with my gift. I help them to tease out the greatness that's already inside of them, their zone of genius, so that they can get what they want out of life. So I've been through a lot of challenges in life but one really sticks out. And it takes me back to high school again. Um, I was at Ellen Roosevelt High School, I was in the ninth grade, and I was in the library working on a project and I met a guy. He caught my attention and we started dating and we fell in love. And most people when they date in high school, they move on to date other people. Well, not us. We actually went ahead and got married and I thought that it was gonna be a happy story, a happy ever after, but we ended up growing up and growing apart. At the same time, I started my pole and central dance studio and he was not the most supportive of my goals and dreams. And as a matter of fact, he would say some of the most demeaning things that my business would never amount to anything. It was nothing more than an expensive hobby. I was nothing, I was a terrible wife and on and on and all the insults you could possibly imagine and I didn't know back then, but I was experiencing mental and emotional abuse because my husband is a narcissist. And um, we were out at a family gathering, social gathering with friends and family. And, you know, we were there with, with, our, with our closest, our closest of closest of friends and family. And he said, um, in an open setting, someone asked him how my business was doing. And he said, I don't know you'll have to ask her. Personally, I hope it burns down. And I was hurt, I was angry, embarrassed, ashamed. If I could have melted in the floor that day, that is what I would have done. But I knew I couldn't stay in that situation. I knew that there was something out there that was better for me. And then all the questions started to come. How? would I move on? How would I tell my family? Where would I live? How did I get here? Someone seemingly so successful on the outside, I had a six-figure job, a multi-six-figure business, but on the inside and behind closed doors, my life was a hot mess. So from that point on, I reached out to my therapist and a few good friends and they all told me the same thing. They told me that it was gonna be okay. And they told me that I would be able to get through this. 
And so I went ahead and I divorced my husband. I started three more businesses. And this experience taught me something really important. It taught me you got to live your life on your own terms. And don't ever set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. And in that moment, I knew that I would be able to do this. And so it's just really important for you to be able to stay true to yourself. <laughs>
I let seeking validation from my mother, my ex-husband, my friends and my family deter me. I asked them if I was successful, if they thought that what I was doing was the right thing, when the only people who knew the answer to that was me and God. So if you are surrounded by people who aren't supportive, who aren't uplifting you, then with love, it's time to change the nature of the relationship and just stop seeking validation. Number two is to ask for help. As a young girl, it was ingrained in me that asking for help were dirty words. And I was the product of teachers. And if I didn't know what I was doing, if anything was uh, beyond my scope of knowledge, I wasn't supposed to ask about it because I should already know. And I, how dare I bring home anything less than an A and be an embarrassment. So as a child, I just thought that I shouldn't ask for help, but I'm telling you and I'm telling my 21 year old self, it's okay to ask for help. Asking for help is strength and it makes you strong because you acknowledge that there's gaps in your knowledge and you acknowledge that there are other things that you need to learn in order to be your best self. And that is really the only way that you're gonna grow and scale a business if you ask for help, if you build a team. One of the most important components of, of building a business that I've taken to heart is if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go further, go together. And so that's the only way you're gonna be able to go further, to be able to reach back and bring others up with you, to help them be successful, be the tide that rises all boats, leave a legacy. And then third, stop playing small. I played small for so many years in my life and in my business. At the age of 16, I started my very first business in e-commerce. I made $16,000 and then I quit because my mother told me I had to go to college. And then I didn't even try entrepreneurship again until two to three years after I got married because my ex-husband told me that he wouldn't marry me if I didn't get a nine to five. And so I was scared that I wouldn't be able to juggle both. So I was in a box and I was getting smaller and smaller and I was shrinking until I couldn't breathe. And it was only when I started to seek coaches and mentors and go to masterminds to figure out a way to break through of this box that I put myself in. So if you have been put into a box by your friends, your family, or maybe even your spouse, it's time to break free, it's time to be bold. It's time to join that program make the decision you need to make, file the paperwork, get on stage, write the book, whatever it is, whatever it takes, because you are destined for greatness. You are destined for more. And it's important for you to do the fearless thing. And that's what I would say to myself. So what's next for me? Well, today I'm helping entrepreneurs to monetize their expertise and create multiple streams of income. So whether they have a coaching program or they have a consulting business or a course or a book, and they're looking to basically increase their revenue, uh, up-level their systems, and they want to be able to have enough revenue to make the impact that they were destined to make. They want to have the financial freedom and the time freedom to be able to do, make a greater impact, but spend less time in their business. Um, that's what I'm helping them with. And I'm doing this with women entrepreneurs and I'm a fierce advocate for women, for uh, helping women to get what they want in life, for women excelling in entrepreneurship. And that's why I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to help develop a hundred women entrepreneur seven to eight figure earners within my lifetime. And this may seem like a lofty goal, but if we shoot for the moon, we reach the stars. So I know that six figures and creating six figures or reaching six figures are buzzwords in, in the entrepreneurship industry, but six figures should be the goal and not the destination, right? When I reached that level in my corporate job and when I reached it, in my business, there was so much more that I knew that I could do, that I wanted to do, but I needed more resources. I needed more 
capital. And I would encourage any women entrepreneurs and men to not stop where society tells us to be content. Go further. And today, there's an increasing number of women entrepreneurs that are entering the uh, entrepreneurship space, but it's not enough to be in the game. You have to kill the game. So I'm really looking forward to making a greater impact with the women entrepreneurs that I serve, and I'm really looking forward to seeing women win. <laughs>